Hey guys, welcome back. And today I've got a mini sort of 3D printing slash CAD project for you. And basically, what I've wanted to do for a while now is create those really cool time lapses. You know those ones where you see the print just like rise up? It's so cool. So, if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that in the past I've done some time lapse videos and I basically used to just set up a stationary camera and record the entire print and then you import the footage into a video editor and speed it up but the problem with that is when you are recording really long prints by the time you speed everything up um, the heat bed and the extruder move so fast that you just can't really you, you can't really watch it as a video so I've done a bit of research and I found that there are solutions out there such as Octolaps and similar kind of things like that where the printer tells a camera to take a picture at the end of every layer so between each layer it's taking a picture and as you know when you do a 3D print there are loads of layers and when you merge them all together you just get that really cool rising effect so I didn't really want to use any of those solutions I wanted to come up with something on my own my own kind of solution where I can mod the pre-existing Prusa Mark 3 and I managed to create these two parts that allow you to mount a shutter to the um, x-axis and then this is mounted to the extruder and it just comes over and hits the shutter so it's a really cool little solution and it's given me a really great opportunity to learn about Fusion 360 uh, custom print settings custom g-code I've really learned a ton of stuff doing this project so I'm going to try and um, transfer that sort of knowledge over to you in this video so that you can replicate the same results if you want to and I'll also put a link to these parts in the description below and they'll be the original CAD files so you can edit them and customize them to your needs so yeah this should be an awesome little video and it's been a great project let's let's get started okay so one of the first things to think about with this was how was I going to position this shutter right so I thought about a couple of ways of doing it and it took me a while to kind of come up with the best solution so originally I wanted to mount it here with Z axis so what I was hoping to do was bring the Z axis up and have a little sticky up bit here on the extruder and just hit the button come back down and carry on printing but obviously the more you think about that that's a terrible idea because one the Z axis is very slow so it takes a while to rise up and a while to come back down but also during that rise in time and while the x-axis has to come across the extruder is still actually extruding filament and while you can while you can stop the extrusion in the g-code it still leaks out right you, you've seen it when you preheat your nozzle even when you're trying to feed filament through when you stop feeding filament through you still get those little drips that come come out of the extruder right it's the same thing so that causes issues when you come back down to print after taking the picture you come back down to print and you've got this excess filament that just drags along your prints and it looks really bad. So I decided that the best way to go was to keep everything on the x-axis. That way you're always in line with the shutter because it moves with the uh, x-axis. So this is a shutter that I use. I'll put a link to this in the description below if you're interested. But it's really simple, all it does is I created this little piece which I'll show you a sec in the CAD but um, it just mounts right onto the X axis motor holder, the original Prusa part. I just use longer bolts that go through and uh, bolt into the motor. So the shutter just slides straight in, it's nice and simple. It's not too hard to put in but also it's really firm, it's not going nowhere. And I created this other part on top of the extruder, which is essentially just an arm that comes across, hits the shutter button, takes the picture. And it's really, really awesome. Uh, I'll show you some videos and things of it working. But for now, I'm going to show you the CAD and how I designed the parts and where you can get the parts. Okay, so now we're in Fusion 360, and I just want to show you how I modeled the, the parts. So you probably recognize this part here. This is the uh, x-axis motor holder for the Prusa Mark III. 
if you built the printer you definitely recognize it but basically all these parts are available on the Prusa website because you're, you're able to print spare parts for your printer which I also recommend you do so I imported the STL files into Fusion 360 and from here I was able to sort of model up the, the bracket that I made to hold the remote shutter so if I show you the model you can see here that I was able to sort of design around the x-axis part so that my uh, bracket fits really nicely to it and it's, it's a really simple model uh, if I hide the Prusa part you can see you know it's just a couple of simple extrusions a few cuts and some nice fillets around the edge and if I play you the animation you can see you know it, it, there wasn't much to it but in doing this you know I learned a lot about Fusion 360 especially modeling from STL files and things like that I'll do a couple of tutorials on it if, if any of you are interested so just let me know in the comments um, so yeah that's the first part now I'll show you the second part so this is the second part that I made and I basically modified the pre-existing uh, Prusa extruder part so this is the bit that fits over the extruder at the top where your filament goes through basically I just I turned the STL file into a mesh and then created this long arm that comes off it looks kind of funny when you look at it but it does the job you know it works so um, I did have to print this with supports obviously because it's it's not flat on the surface of the print bed but that's easy enough uh, in a slicer so yeah that's that's it the parts are really simple as I said uh, the links to the part will be in the description below if you want to replicate what I've done now I'm going to show you uh, some of the g-code stuff so this is that's some of the more complicated parts that people have asked me about you know how did you inject custom g-code so I'm going to show you that now okay guys so as you can see this is the installation of the parts that I made and it's really really straightforward nice and easy and what I did was just basically take out the bolts from the original motor part and put in some longer ones just to give them that bit of extra reach and tighten everything up and it's ready to go before we get into the g-code I want to give you a visual representation of what we're trying to achieve so in order to do that first I need to make sure you understand what we are trying to achieve so to get that cool time-lapse effect what we essentially do is we tell the y and the x-axis to go to certain coordinates after every single layer of the print and in doing so we take the photo now that gives us that cool effect of it looks like there's nothing else moving except the print right but that isn't just you know coincidence you tell the y-axis and the x-axis what coordinates you want to give it right what, where they should be so the first thing we do is we tell the printer that we want the y-axis to move to say this position every single time now it doesn't matter exactly where on the y-axis but this is something you would set up beforehand so you would kind of tweak it for your setup usually it'd be a position where your print is in focus on the camera so every time you take that image in between layers it's in focus and when you blend them all together it looks like a video so that's the first thing we do. In order to figure out the coordinate of the position that you want the y-axis to be in, you can use the settings on the printer. So I'll show you that here. So to find our coordinates, it's actually really easy. You just want to hit the button once, come down to settings, and you'll see an option move axis. You want to click this one. And then we'll see move x, move y, move z. So I'll just show you move y for this example. And you can see that we've got a coordinate value there. Now if we start turning the wheel, we'll see that value increase. And if we keep increasing it, you should see the um, heat bed show up. So there it is. So all we do is find a position that we're happy with, and we then jot down this coordinate. And we do the exact same thing for the x-axis, but with the x-axis we're just looking for the point where the printed arm hits that shutter button. And then you want to jot down that coordinate also. So once we've determined our y-axis, the next thing we need to focus on is the x-axis. 
and you do the exact same thing but now you're kind of looking at your shutter and the arm right so you would again go into the settings and move the extruder over to the point where it hits that shutter button and that's the point where it'll take the photograph and when you look at the time lapse you can see you know that the extruder is always over here in this position and you just see that print rise up and the z-axis also rises so that's basically it you just need to figure out the coordinates of the y the y-axis position and the coordinates of the x-axis position that push that shutter button now right after you hit the shutter button what we actually need to do is come back a bit to release the shutter button obviously so the camera will take the photograph then we want to hold it there for about one and a half to two seconds and this gives us enough time to take the picture and the print will then continue as normal but I'll explain this a bit more when we look at the g-code next okay so now we're in slicer producer edition and what I'm going to do is show you how to inject and write that custom g-code that will tell the printer to go and press that shutter button so if you're familiar with uh, slicer producer edition you'll recognize this screen we're not interested in this tab at the minute so in the top left there's a tab called printer settings so you want to click that and you've probably maybe you've never seen this before because a lot of people don't mess with these custom settings but the one we want is this custom G code here now you'll see in here there are different options so we've got the G code at the start that does that you know test print and it does a line around your print then we've got the NG code and we've got before layer change and after layer change and, and, and these are what we're interested in right we're just going to use before layer change so this is the default template for the Mark III and they've, they've got these uh, default commands in there so I actually left those in so if I go to my template you can see now that I have extra G code in there and this is the G code that is going to press that shutter button so I'm going to just walk you through it line by line so you understand what's going on so this first command is G1 E-6 F1800 and what this is saying is it's giving the printer a move command. A G1 command always means move. So saying move the extruder, so we're retracting six millimeters of filament at 1800 millimeters per minute. So the reason we have to retract is because as I said before, when you come away from the print, the extruder can still leak through filament, right? And when it comes back to continue the print, you can have that sort of excess overhang if you like of filament that can mess up your print so just to kind of safeguard that we're going to retract six millimeters of filament to stop that from happening and for the most part it works it's never perfect you'll have to tweak it for your own printer because the chances are these settings that work for me probably won't work for you so you're going to have to play around with them so as i said what we're saying is retract six millimeters of filament at 1800 millimeters per minute so as soon as it finishes the layer, first thing it does, retract the filament. That stops it leaking out. Then, the next command is, as I said before, remember I told you to jot down that Y coordinate when we moved the bed forward. So this command is a G1 command again, which means move. So we're saying move the Y axis to coordinate position 156, which is the coordinate that I chose to use for my time lapse. So whatever you wrote down when you set up your printer, that's what you'd put here, that number. Then the next command is move the x-axis. And again, this would have been whatever you jotted down at that exact point that the arm presses the shutter button. So in my case, this was at coordinate position 3. Following that command is another move command. And as I said before, we now need to release the shutter button. So you can move away from coordinate position 3 just so that we release the shutter button so the camera gets a chance to take the photograph then after that we're using a g4 command and a g4 command is a dwell command or a pause think of it as a pause so we're just saying pause for one and a half seconds while the photograph is taken and that's it that whole process uh, is completed successfully when you finish a layer and you can test it out you know it, it you will need to tweak these values and it can be a bit frustrating trying to get it right but when you do get them right it just works flawlessly and it's pretty awesome 
Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about is camera settings. Now, camera settings are extremely important when doing a time lapse. If you don't know too much about photography, you might struggle with this part. So I use a Nikon DSLR camera to do the time lapses, right? So what you need to aim for is a consistent environment. And I mean in terms of lighting and camera settings. Now, a lot of cameras and things have auto mode, which a lot of people use. But the problem with auto mode on a camera is that well, it's not a problem. It's a problem in this case, but it adjusts to the environment, right? So if you're trying to take a picture in the night, you will have a higher ISO and a different aperture to what you'd have in the day. And when you're trying to do a time lapse, you need everything to be consistent so that when you merge all the frames, it just looks like one video. So just as an example, if you're doing like a 48 hour print and you start it at 7 a.m., it's probably going to be light, the sun's going to be up or it's going to be just coming up and you're taking a picture every layer of the print. Now by the time it comes to 7pm if you're using auto mode on your camera it's going to be dark and the settings of the image will change because it's dark so you, to avoid this you need to use manual mode on a camera so DSLRs usually allow you to have full control of the images that you're taking. So you're gonna to need to use a manual focus, which will let you ensure, remember I was saying before where you set up the Y position, the, bit of the, the heat bed position. You set that up perfectly so that your camera's in focus. So you manually focus to that point. And then you wanna set the um, aperture. So the aperture lets a certain amount of light into the camera. So you wanna set all these things so that they're consistent. So if you've got a nice lighting setup around your printer in a room with maybe the curtain shut, that light is always going to be consistent. Even if the sun passes by the window, you know, because it's blocked by the curtains. Which is what I do here. So if I start a print and I'm doing a time lapse, I'll shut the curtains, turn the lights on around my printer. And you'll see after this video, I'll do a time lapse example. You will see the result. It's really consistent. It's awesome. So yeah, with camera settings it can be tricky don't let it discourage you you will need to do some learning and you know learn about settings and stuff but you'll pick it up and it's all a part of the learning process so okay as always guys thank you so much for watching if you found the video helpful please consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel um for the end of the video i'll leave you with a cool time lapse i hope you enjoy it I look forward to seeing you on another video. Take it easy, guys.